Lord of your greatness upon us. Hallelujah to you, Jehovah. We worship you. We adore you. We exalt you. Blessed be the name of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. Let's bring our worship to a conclusion and just tell him, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your name is Yahweh. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. Amen. Amen. You're welcome this morning to the Amazing Grace Christian Center. I just want to thank God for all the brethren in the house and all the brethren all over the nations of the earth and everyone who have connected with us that are with us live and those who will watch later. I pray that your coming today will not be in vain. You have not come to see any man. You have not come into any man's presence. You have come to meet with the almighty God through his son, Jesus Christ. And the Lord himself will visit you mightily. He will show his kindness over your life and over your family. He that has called us that we should not forsake the assembly of one another together. He is the one that has called us that we should seek him. When we seek him, we will find him. As we come with our heart seeking God this morning, as we come with our heart to know him more this morning, as we come with our heart to worship and fellowship with him this morning, I pray that yokes will be broken, burden will be lifted, and the blessing of the Lord that make rich and had no sorrow will come upon every life and every family. In the name of Jesus, the generation yet unborn, because this month we shall enjoy generational package. That will be from generation to generation till Jesus come in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we pray that the good things that God has ordained for us this month they shall all come to pass. None of them will fail. They will not fail. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. We give you glory. Be thou exalted, King of glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. amen. God bless you, everyone. We just trust that we we'll fellowship together around God's word this morning. And um, I want you to relax. The word of God is to establish us. The word of God is to strengthen us. The word of God is to build us up. The word of God is to make us to become like God through his son, Jesus Christ. The word of God is the only foundation we can stand upon that we will not sink, we will not fall. The word of God is the only thing we can hold on to and then we are secured. If the word of God is the only thing that we can speak and it's manifest in our lives because the word of God is able to create all the things that we desire in life. All we need to do is to speak the word of God and then as God said his word and he saw what he said, and we will speak the word of God by faith, we will see what we desire according to the word of God, because the word of God never fails. And I pray today that as we fellowship around God's word, we will not fail. The word of God will not fail. And so we will not fail. It is too late. The word of God can never fail. We've seen that God by creation at the beginning it was his word. At the end, it will be his word. So we are secured in his word. So let's enjoy ourselves, relax, and uh, have your jot, have your notes, have things that you can put down, the things that minister to you personally, that minister to your family, that minister to your congregation, that minister to your ministry, that minister to your community, that minister to your nation, that minister to people around you. Don't think about yourself when it comes to God, because God is too big for you. He wants to bless you and make you a blessing. <laughs> and so everything we are going to be receiving this morning, let it not be only you that you receive all and you put in the can and you sit on the can. No, I want you to receive all. And then in the receiving, you are remembering everyone that comes into your thought mind. And you say, God, remember this. Remember this, my brother. Remember this, my sister. Remember the mayor of my city. Remember the governor. Remember the prime minister, the president. Everyone that is around you, they are your responsibility to be a blessing to them. And in turn, they will also be a blessing to you. I pray that you will continue to be a blessing. And uh, as you are blessed in Jesus mighty name we have prayed
Amen. Our theme for the month of August, God have decided to give us a season of celebration, a season of thanksgiving, a season of testimony. And um, it said straight into our heart, the theme for the month of August, the Lord has done great things for us. I'll repeat, the Lord has done great things for us. I want you to connect with this word, stand on this word, receive this word, and say to yourself, Father, you have done great things for me. No matter whatever you're feeling at the moment, just tell him, Lord, you have done great things for me. Because God has not kept us alive to this time. He has not sustained us up to this time to disappoint us. And so if he has done it before, he will do it again. And that is what that Psalm 126 is telling us. And that key line in the verse 3 says, The Lord has done great things for us, and wherefore we are glad. And I pray that you will be glad. For the knowledge of God brings us to the place where we are glad in God. And that we enjoy God. So that's the theme for the month. The Lord has done great things. It's already packaged. You have, may not have access to them now, but you will do. Because if it is written in your name, it will be delivered to your address. And if you deliver it to your address, you will sign for it and it becomes yours. No matter how long it takes, you will enjoy God. You will enjoy the blessing of God that make rich and add no sorrow to it. And every year of disappointment and sorrow and frustration will be forgotten completely. Because the Lord will make you the celebrity of your generation in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So our theme and the scripture to back our theme up is in that Psalms 126. But today we'll be looking into um, how to activate all that God has packaged for us in this theme how to activate them, how to make them to be delivered onto our hands. And um, we use them for his glory. We use them to be a blessing. We use them to be a blessing to mankind. Because whatever God gives to any man is not only for the man, because God is bigger to the man. And then God in the man makes the man a blessing unto others. Because you come into God and into the inheritance of God, pack it to your life. God is too generous. All your needs are already met and they will give you more than what you desire. So we're looking today, how do we activate this theme of the month? How do we activate it? And today we'll be looking as our topic for today, knowledge to acknowledge. Knowledge to acknowledge. It's extremely key. It, no matter whatever you know, if you don't know how to convert it to be a blessing to you and to others, it becomes a tool that is dormant in your hand. It becomes a revelation that is tactic in your life. It becomes uh, the, the provision of God that you don't know how to handle it. Knowledge to acknowledge. Knowledge to acknowledge. Everything about our relationship with God, every operation upon the face of the earth, about the kingdom of God extended upon the face of the earth, is to do with this key revelation. And I pray God will give us more key revelations as we go on in this month, so that we will do things in the right way and we'll get the right result. The end comes to toiling without harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. The end comes to laboring without wages. In the name of Jesus Christ, the end come to every good seed that we have sown without a commensurable harvest. In the name of Jesus Christ, many have toiled and labored, but then they didn't know how to enter into, our, into their harvest. Today, you will enter into your harvest by knowledge and acknowledgement. In the name of Jesus Christ, knowledge to acknowledge. And uh, as we go further, let me just give you this scenario that will validate how to understand this key to unlock and activate all that God has laid in stock for you 
in this season. At some point, Mary, the young lady, was about to be married to Mr. Joseph, the Bible said. Mary, the mother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there was a conversation in Luke chapter 1 when Angel Gabriel all of a sudden visited this woman or this lady. And then there was conversation upon conversation from the beginning of that chapter, uh, verse 1, and you get to verse 26, 27, 28, 29 down, and you see Angel Gabriel having a conversation. But it got to a point in the process of this conversation, knowledge was being impacted upon the life of Mary. Unknowingly, knowledge was being impacted. Knowledge was being impacted. And there was a conversation and she was responding. How can these things be? I did not know any man. And then you said, I will conceive, I will have a baby. Then knowledge is being impacted. But in verse 37, the Bible said, Mary said something very profound. He said, the angel Gabriel firstly said, for with God, nothing will be impossible in verse 37. And all this conversation that was going on, as soon as he said, how can these things be? And he said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest will come upon you. And that thing that is inside of you is the son of God. And you will surely carry it and you will give back to it. I paraphrase. And then, and the, and the angel Gabriel said, for with God in verse 37, Luke chapter 1. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. As soon as that is spoken, knowledge already has taken place in the process of discussion. Then Mary said, at this point, in verse 38, then Mary said, then Mary said, you must understand that there is a commensurable response to this knowledge. Then Mary said, acquiring knowledge, and he said, with God, nothing shall be impossible. So all that you have been saying, they are possible with God. And, it's, and then Mary said, behold, the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed. You can see the finality of activation of the destiny of the plan and the purposes of God for the life of a lady or a man, anybody. When knowledge takes place, Mary acknowledge this knowledge. And the one he actually acknowledged came to pass. Acknowledgement of knowledge, knowledge to acknowledge. Until you get to a point, listen to this, until you get to a point to acknowledge that which God has freely given to you, you may not be able to access it. No matter how many times you quote it, acknowledgement of it is very key. It said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Acknowledgement of the word that's been delivered to her. She received it. And she acknowledged it. When a parcel is sent to you from a friend, a gift that is valuable, when they deliver you, sign for it, you receive it. And it's acknowledged that you have received it, then it becomes yours. Hallelujah. And the angel departed until the acknowledgement came. The angel did not go. <laughs> your angel will not depart until when you receive the blessing that God has packaged in your name. In the name of Jesus. This was a, a mystery at this time. Packaged in the name of Mary. Delivered, signed and sealed by the angel of God. From God Almighty himself. For the plan that he had for mankind upon the face of the earth. May you be the choice that God will send a package to in this season. This season, you will not lack God's package. When men say there is a downcasting, God will say there is a lifting for you. The word of God will be louder than the word of men in your life in this season. In the name of Jesus, if he has done it for somebody before, yours, we will do this season. Your season has come and your time has come. This is your turn. In the name of Jesus, for a divine visitation, all you need is the knowledge of what we are saying and to acknowledge it that God is good and his mercies endure it forever. May you be blessed forevermore. In the name of Jesus. Knowledge to acknowledge. And all this till today has become a testimony that Mary had a knowledge in a short period of time 
from Luke chapter 1, from the beginning and to verse 38. And knowledge was impacted. And in verse 30, in verse 38, she said, be it unto me. She acknowledged the word of God. She acknowledged the gift of God. She acknowledged the grace of God. She acknowledged the mercy of God. She acknowledged the provision of God. She acknowledged the blessings of God. All packaged in the word of God sent to him. Uh, the word of God is coming to you this morning. You will be delivered. I say you will be set free by the word of God today. In the name of Jesus Christ, there shall be a turnaround by the word of God today. In the name of Jesus, all you need to do is to Amen. acknowledge it. Amen. Acknowledge it. And the angel departed. <laughs> you will not be absent on the day of your visitation. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> you will not be absent. In the name of Jesus, no matter how many years that you have failed, this season you will succeed. In the name of Jesus. So our scripture for the theme this month is in Psalm 126, and I'll read King James Version. From verse 1 to verse 6. When the Lord turned against the captivity of Zion, we were like them that came. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. That's right. Our thought, our tongue was singing. They said they are among the hidden. The Lord has done great things for them. Verse 3, the Lord has done great things for us. We are of, we are glad. They turn again our captivity, O oh Lord. And the streams in the mouth. Hey, they so in tears shall weep in joy. He that go for them weeped bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoice and bring in his shoes with him. That will be your portion because there shall be a turnaround Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. About life. Sorry, it's not going. The technical will fix that now. The technical will fix that now. Some microphone needs to shut down. Anything needs to shut down so that uh, we can stay focused. A few things we need to know about God and His kingdom. About God and His kingdom about God and his kingdom. And bear in mind the testimony of Mary in that Luke chapter 1, verse 38 and verse 39, uh, verse 38 particularly, verse 37 and verse 38. A few things that are notable with God and his kingdom. Because the kingdom of God on earth is governed by principles, by guidelines, by things that people takes for granted. So notable things that governs God's kingdom upon the face of the earth as it is in heaven and so he wants it to be established here which is the aspect of dominion. But there are guidelines there are principles with God and about God. The first thing you will understand with God is God has got principles. You must note that. Principles of God, they are the, it is regarded as the ways of God. It's different. The ways of God are the ways of his kingdom. The ways of a king is the ways of the kingdom of that king, the domain of the king. And everyone that comes into that domain, they have to follow the principle of the kingdom. So there's a kingdom principle. Some of the kingdom principle shows by illustration and by, uh, by scripture, that God will not come physically upon the face of the earth to do anything because he has put man in his image and after his likeness on earth to dominate the earth for him as he, he is in heaven, he living on his throne and is unmovable. So man is given power to dominate the earth unmovable. So if there is anything that God will need to do upon the face of the earth, according to his principle, it will go through a man. It will go through mankind because he put mankind there. That is the way he has established it. <laughs> the principles of God. You violate it, you get into trouble. So God representative on earth is mankind. Mankind cannot be violated. The Lordship of Christ is a principle. He chose to do it like that. 
That is the way. He chose to do it. That is his principle. You accept him as Lord, you become a member of his family. <laughs> Faith and trust in God, they are principle. He is the source, is the sustainer. He created the heavens and the earth and all they that dwell there, in, including yourself and myself. It is his principle. So it has to be his ways for us to enjoy all his acts, to, all, to enjoy all his inheritance, or to enjoy every of his provision. It has to be his, his ways. And that's why he is the God to mankind and he is the father to the redeemed. You must see him more, more than being a God to you, but a father. Faith and trust in God. There is principles. Without faith, you can't get anything tangible, reasonable in God's kingdom. Who would have not seen God before, you have to believe that he is and is the rewarder. He exists and is the reward of them that diligently seek him. That's what Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 told us. So that's principles. There are other principles. Holiness, righteousness, they are principles of the kingdom. They are the ways of the kingdom. Are we together? Praise God. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. They are principles. That is how the kingdom of God on earth functions. The second thing you must know that is notable about the governance of God's kingdom on earth, the ways of God, the way God has put things in place. The, the number two is laws of God. There are laws of God, God's law. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22 says, Why the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. That is the law of God. He put them in place. You don't need to pray for snow. You don't need to pray for rain. You don't need to pray for seed. You don't need to pray for harvest. They are law. You have seed, you sow it. And in a, in a period of time, harvest will come. Why do we pray when we sow a seed? So that things will not jam it and they destroy it or make it not to bear fruit or you will not be absent the day of your harvest. That's why we pray. That's why we pray. But it's a law. Because those that does not even pray, when they sow a seed, there is harvest because it's a law. But while you pray, you know that there's no contradictions or things that will go contrary because you are secured in him and you are saying to him, Father, I have done what you have put as law. I've sown my seed. So a man that does not sow his seed and is keeping his seed is going to go hungry. He's going to go empty because there will not be harvest. When the harvest time comes, it will be an onlooker. May that not be our portion. There are laws of God. You violate it. It's not good for you. It's not good for you. Sow your seed. Be kind to mankind. Think of good for others. Even those who despise you, those who hate you, those who stab you, think good for them. So good seed, even when they sow bad seed, you saw the parable of the good seed that was planted and the enemy came overnight and sow tars. And then there was no trouble. The owner of the vineyards, they leave the two of them alone. Let them begin to sow bad things to you. Don't give bad in return as bad seeds or harvest to them. You keep sowing good seed. And the Bible say, when they despise you, bless them. When they slap you on the left, turn the right. When they hate you, you love them. That is the kingdom ways. That is God's ways. That is the law. So good seed. Is it going to be easy? No. I, I don't know how we sow bad seeds when people give us bad, <laughs> bad things or people hate us. Because if we belong to God and he's our source and our sustainer, and we receive from him and we give to others. He said he will bless us and he will make us a blessing. He did not give you, he did not give you bad seed to sow bad to others. So when they are sowing bad seed to you and you are receiving good seed from the Lord, you don't give them back their bad seed as harvest. You give them that which you have received from the Lord to them. That is the law of God. That is the kingdom of God's ways of doing things. <laughs> 
He said, every seed will produce after its kind. Genesis chapter 1, verse 24. Every seed will produce after its kind. So you keep sowing good seed because you will surely get good harvest. It may not come from men, but those who that did not know you, the Lord will raise men that will favor you. Wherever you go for our country, the Lord will raise men that will look after you. Why? Because you have sown good seed and even so good seed to generation yet unborn. So that generation to generation, they will continue to enjoy the favor of God, the mercy of God, the blessing of God, God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, to our Lord Jesus and to us is a generational blessing. When you sow good seed, it's the law. Are we together? Every seed we produce after its kind is the law. Till tomorrow. Goat will give back to goat. <laughs> a lion will give back to lion. Till tomorrow. Apple seed will give back to apple. <laughs> Praise God. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Is a law. Romans 10 verse 13. You don't call upon the name of the Lord. You don't accept him as Lord. You don't confess him as Lord and Savior. You remain the same. God is not going to tamper with those ones. He's giving them to us as law. They walk. They walk. And they walk for you. It's the principles and the laws of the kingdom that governs the kingdom of God upon the face of the earth. I want you to understand how to activate the gift and the grace and the mercy and the provision of God for this season for you in the name of Jesus. The third thing we you must understand about God and how he governs his kingdom is that God also put commandments in place. The commandments of God. You hear things like, thou shalt not worship any other God, but because God is a jealous God. <laughs> Exodus 34 verse 14. It's a jealous God. You don't worship any other God. You can't have God and worship another God. No. He's the only God. There's no other God. Praise God. They say, tarry ye in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. You don't tarry in Jerusalem. You are not endued with power. That was what he said to them. And the, the principle behind it is that what God is saying is, when he had give you a commission, he's going to empower you so you stay with God. What simply means is they were staying where God commanded them to stay. Your Jerusalem may be in the United Kingdom today. It may be in Canada. It may be in Lagos. It may be somewhere in, in Nairobi. It could be anywhere in Amsterdam. But let that be the place where God commanded you to tarry. When you tarry, the blessing come. When you tarry, the power come. When you tarry, the favor come. Then you tarry, the grace come. Then you become a blessing to others. It's a commandment. The commander is in charge. <laughs> May you not lose your location Amen. for your allocation. There is always a location for an allocation. May you not lose your location. It may be looking good. It may be looking good somewhere else. Ha, you may not be like Lot. You will not go the way of Lot. You will not make the mistake of Lot. That he saw good places and he thought that's where the provision is. He did not know the covenant is what produces for you. The covenant was with Abraham. You stay with the covenant. You stay with the man that has got the covenant. You stay with the company that has got the covenant. The word of God is the covenant of God to mankind. Tarry ye in Jerusalem. And you have to tarry there until the power comes. Stay in the place of covenant. Knowledge to acknowledge. Knowledge to acknowledge. You will not miss God. In the name of Jesus, in this season, if you have gone astray, you will come back to God. You will be reconciled back to God because his mercy is endures forever. You will not be angry forever because the blood of Jesus will continue to speak for us before the throne room of grace. And that's what we are enjoying every day of our lives. And we will not give up. There's commandments of God. These are the ways of law of the Lord. You must understand. Go ye into the world and make disciples of all nations. And, and the power that he has promised will follow you. For those who believe in my name, they will cast out devils. So if you don't go ye, if you don't go, the power will not be released. It will not be activated. 
sometimes you see this commandment, they are, they are based on obedience. They are based on instructions that you must apply to. Praise the Lord. All right. You, now that you understand this testimony of Mary, and you understand the topic for today to, to activate all that God has packaged for us from the foundation of the earth to now until Jesus will come. We are looking further into knowledge, knowledge, knowledge to acknowledge. For he has done great things for us, and so we are glad. He has done great things for us, and so we are glad. What are the great things that God has done for us? Let me say this as we progress. Write this down. Greatness was in mankind's creative DNA. Greatness. Because the Bible said God put his breath in man. A man became a living soul. And you can know that you are carrying God by his breath. <laughs> so all about God, all that makes God God, he put in man by his breath. Glory, power, grace, mercy, blessing. So that it can dominate the earth. The way heaven is in control, that God is in control of heaven, that man will be in the control and the management of the earth to rule over the earth. So greatness is in the DNA and creative DNA of mankind because we carry God. We carry the breath of God. Therefore, God will always do great things for us because it is in our DNA to be great. Acknowledging that we came from the great God, <laughs> then you will manifest greatness upon the face of the earth. You must acknowledge that you came from the great God. Is your source, is your sustainer. You don't exist without him. He keeps you here for his purpose, to do his will. Therefore, God will always do great things for those that acknowledge. You understand? Knowledge and acknowledge. Knowledge to acknowledge. Those who acknowledge the greatness of God, the sovereignty of God, the almightiness of God, they will be great upon the face of the earth. The Bible said, my people go into captivity despite that they, um, they have greatness in their life. They still go into captivity. <laughs> Hosea 4, 6, my people do go into captivity or are destroyed because they lack knowledge, because they rejected knowledge. So you must, you must learn what we are learning today and take it home and sit down and think over a Ponder over it many times. What are the things that you know? Are they error? If they are error, you need to seek the truth. If they are truth, you need to see why are they not working for you. And if they are not working for you, what are the things that, they, that, they, that guides the governing principles and the laws and the commands of God that we have explained that maybe those are the missing points? Because it's not only to pray, 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 pray. pray. And then you are not loving your neighbor as, you, as yourself. You don't, you don't give everything to God. You don't say God's kingdom first. You don't do all that God has commanded. And you're praying to the same God. Even when God answers the prayer, the accuser can block it. <laughs> How we to get? Praise the name of the Lord. He said, nonetheless, my people go into captivity. Even though we have greatness in our DNA. Even though God has made great things for us. And so we are glad. But people still go into captivity because they lack knowledge. They go into destruction. They go into disaster because they lack knowledge. Because they rejected knowledge. Not because knowledge is not available. Read carefully in that Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Not because knowledge is not available. What we are hearing today is knowledge. It, did, it didn't take this long for Gabriel to impact, impact knowledge on Mary. What has never happened before. That the conception will come without a man's seed. It can take a whole 10, 20 years for, uh, for a human being to understand this. 
That's why in the university, you spend five years, you spend three years, because the no knowledge takes a period of time to impact, but in a period of the uh, visitation, in a short time, knowledge was impacted. And that Mary did not go into captivity because he acknowledged knowledge. How are we to get? You must. You can have many knowledge, but the one you acknowledge is the one that will work for you. And then you must know in the acknowledgement of the knowledge, don't just have knowledge that will lead you to disaster or destruction or calamity or, 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 or disfavor with God or faith disfavor with man. Be careful with what you hear, what you know. There are things that happen and take place, but they don't have to to be acknowledged. Because they are not part of your destiny. They do happen. And then you acknowledge it, you stand with it, you stay there, and they are killing you. And then you know this is not for you. Why do you, why do you allow things that you, that you trample under your feet to stop you? You trample under your feet, serpent and scorpion, and they will not hurt you. You don't stay with them and be chatting with them like Eve did. Even though you, the knowledge is there, you know that God said in this garden, this is what you should do. And then you, you did not speak the one that is the truth or the fact or the lie from the pit of hell. And then you acknowledge everything. No. Knowledge must bring, to a, bring you to a place to acknowledge the truth. And then the one you acknowledge works for you. May you not acknowledge what is wrong. May you not acknowledge error. In the name of Jesus. The same thing they talk about the virus and vaccine. And there's so many things that is going about. You must know the truth. And then you acknowledge the truth. And the truth sets you free. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So there are many things that happen. It's not everything that you acknowledge. So you can have knowledge of everything, but what informs your life is the word of God, the truth in God, the things that will make your destiny to matter, to be a blessing unto others. That's what you inform your life. You said last Sunday, our challenges, our trials does not, does not give us an identity. It does not define us. No. We know it's there. We know they are there. You keep telling us, yes, you keep telling us all the things that are not good about us. Yes, thank you for that. But what we acknowledge is that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. In us shall all the families of the earth be blessed. We are the head and not the tail. Every, every, every door that God has opened unto us is held on by God himself. It will not be shut against us. He said he has opened an open door before which no man can shut. Through a conscious exercise of your will, your will, you can determine not to acknowledge certain things. You can say, this, this does not belong to me. It does not look like me. This thing you are saying, okay, I know it's there, but it doesn't look like me. This situation is not nice, but it's going to change because it doesn't define me. This is not the end of my life. It doesn't speak of my glory. It doesn't speak of what God said concerning me. It doesn't speak of where I'm going. Where I'm going is my focus. And I will overcome this. Trials and temptations are part of the journey of life. But they don't define us. They don't stop us. You exercise your will. I will arise and go back to my father. I will arise and go back to my father. I will arise and go back to my father, the prodigal son said. And from that moment, the yokes were broken. Just by knowledge. An acknowledgement of the fact that it's better in my father's house. <laughs> it's better in my father's house than this place that I'm eating with swine and struggling about life. It's better with God. It's better with kingdom of God than all this struggle and toiling and manipulations of life just because we did not follow the way of the Lord. Today, may the Lord give us a conviction to understand that knowledge 
is leading to an acknowledgement that God is supreme, that God is sovereign, that God is the almighty, that he reigns and rules in the affairs of men. And without him, we can do nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. So there are some things that happen and they take place, but you don't need to notice them. You don't need to acknowledge that you exercise your will to determine which one you acknowledge. Not because those things that are happening are not real. They are real. Sickness are real. Poverty are real. <laughs> but that does not define you. You don't acknowledge them. You, you live your life based on the principles and the precepts and the commandment and the law of the land and the law of God to get from where you are to where you are going. A man that is going nowhere is what admits anything that happens. And then you stay in one place. That doesn't mean that we are living in denial, but we are exercising knowledge. <laughs> so acknowledgement, listen to this. Acknowledgement connotes acceptance. Knowledge gives you truth or information or facts or reality. That's knowledge. Facts, reality, truth. But acknowledgement simply enables you to accept which one amongst what the knowledge has given to you. Are you going to accept lies? Are you going to accept facts or reality or the truth? So acknowledgement connotes acceptance. It connotes validation. When you accept it, you acknowledge it. When you acknowledge it, you have accepted it. When you acknowledge it, you have validated it. It ignites your belief. You begin to, you begin to think of it because it now is in your hand. And before you know, you say, wow, I've taken a wrong decision. May you not take a wrong decision. May you take the right decision. In the knowledge of the truth, not in the facts, not in the reality. Because they are there. The truth will always prevail. It's the truth that sets free. There are some things that comes about my life medically. I have to call my friends that are experts in those areas. And when they talk the truth to me... <laughs> That strengthens me and I know what to do and where to go and how to go. And then before you know it, by the time they call me back in about a week or two weeks time, how far everything is gone. So definition of acknowledgement is simply acceptance of the truth or acceptance of the existence or the existence of something. That is acknowledgement. You accept it. So knowledge will put you in the place of knowing what is available. Acknowledgement is to say that out of this man, oh, this is the one I want. This is good for me. <laughs> Are we together? <laughs> Reality of facts and knowledge of truth. Listen to this. And you can write this down. Reality of facts and knowledge of truth bring you to the realm of faith. This thing is real. It's reality. These facts are reality. Doctors have said this. The government have said it. The scientists have said it. You cannot deny the COVID-19. They call it C-19 in some nations. It is, it is the fact. This is real. It's there. <laughs> so reality of facts and knowledge of truth. Now, you know that the reality of this fact is that there's COVID-19. But the knowledge of truth is that the scientists are giving us everyday update. And they're telling us the things that can develop our antibody that can help us to be able to withstand the attack of virus in our body, which is called vaccine. And then it is that knowledge of the truth, the truth that you know brings you to the realm of faith. The same thing in the kingdom of God. Sickness are realities of life. Diseases are realities of life. Death are realities of life. But the truth is the fact that you will live, you will not die. <laughs> are we together? By his stripes, we have been made whole. That's the truth. 
Fact is there, truth is there, and then you now move from that knowledge of truth to faith. So you either believe the truth or you believe the facts, and then you remain where you are by believing the fact because nothing will change. But if you believe the truth and then you apply the truth, then faith is act activated and God backs it up. Faith does not deny facts. No, it doesn't deny facts. Faith never denies facts. Rather, it, es it establishes the truth. Say, this is the fact. Yeah, faith will tell you. That's the fact. Let let's look at it like that. But this is the truth. This is the word God has said. This is your portion. You need to acknowledge this truth. When you acknowledge this truth, you'll be able to fight and conquer the facts. You acknowledge vaccine. You conquer the COVID-19. You acknowledge scientific direction. You conquer COVID-19. You understand what the Lord has said concerning your life. No matter the arrows of the enemy and the javelins of the enemy, you will keep standing. Say, stand therefore and put on the whole garment and the whole armor of God. That is the truth. The fact is there. The enemy is throwing arrows every day, every now. And you have been wounded. That's not the end of your life. You will arise again. And you will shine. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So faith doesn't, does not deny facts. Rather, it establishes the truth. And you hold on to the truth, you'll be set free. I can assure you that. For the truth sets free. Faith is not standing in the clouds. <laughs> Please get this. You may not need to write this down. But get it into your spirit. Faith is not standing in the clouds. But faith is standing on the word of God. You are not just flowing and floating in the air. And you are just imagining things. That's faith. No. Or you are just wishing it. No. You apply faith based on the word of God. This is what God said. That's the truth. This is the fact. Well, let it be there. But this faith, I'm going to apply it so that it can eliminate this fact or change this fact or turn this fact around. And at the end of the day, you are more than a conqueror. At the end of the day, you are a winner, no matter how long it takes. Glory be to Jesus Christ. So faith is not just standing in the clouds or standing and you're, you're wishing. Faith is standing on the word of God. The word of God is the truth. Praise God. I'm going to round up here and I will continue from here. Knowledge to acknowledge. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Knowledge to acknowledge. You must, you must, you must give yourself to knowledge. That's why Christians and believers are in captivity and they are tossed to and fro because they lack knowledge. They, are, they enter into captivity because they lack knowledge. A whole 365 days in a year, a believer has not opened the Bible once. All that he had is what the pastor taught him or on the internet. And all that is being taught, there was none of them that he has jotted down that he's saying that I'm going to go and study this. I'm going to go and check it out. I'm going to go and develop it. I'm going to take it to God in prayer. This thing that I've heard by this preaching is showing me that I am prayerlessness. It's showing me that I am not walking in righteousness. It's showing me that I am not good to anybody. It's showing me that all the bitterness and anger and all this unforgiveness is going to take me to hell. It's not make me to stand to fulfill divine destiny. The devil will just be able to trip me here and there. That is what the message brings to us. And then you take it to God in the place of prayer, in the place of meditation. You act upon it. Until you acknowledge it, you will not be able to act upon it. And until you act upon it, it does not activate for you. A man can remain the same. And he has been born again for 20 years. If he's not developing his life by the word of God. Conformity to the word without transformation by the word. You can write that down. It's not in my notes. Conformity to the word without transformation by the word of God. The only transformation is by the word of God. The truth. If you are not transformed, you are conforming. Conformity to the word without transformation by the word. So if you are not being transformed by the word of God, 
you are conforming to the world. You are being ruled by the arm of flesh. And it's simple. It's because you have rejected knowledge. You have rejected knowledge. That's why, it, that's why people go into captivity. And they are looking for somebody to fix it for them. Knowledge is king. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Then you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. John chapter 8 verse 32. Faith is evidence of the, now you can write this down as we close. Faith is, I, I've, got, I've got five things that I want to talk about in the truth for a glorious living under knowledge and acknowledgement. But we'll leave that. By God's grace, we'll deal with it next time we come by God's grace next week. Faith by definition or by scriptural uh, a connotation in Hebrews chapter 1, chapter 11, verse 1. I paraphrase. Faith, I'm going to para paraphrase. Faith is evidence of things not seen. You can write this down. Nevertheless, they exist. You don't see them. Things that God has put in your name, you don't see them. Great things that God has allocated for you, you don't see them. And thou has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. You don't see them. The Lord has done great things for us. You don't see them. But that does not nullify or negate that they exist. They are in existence. They have been allocated for you, to you, in your name. So faith is not for you not to live in denial. Faith is evidence of things not seen. You may not tangibly have them in your hand physically, but they exist. Is the evidence, application of the truth, the word of God is, it is, is application of faith. Belief in the word of God is application of faith. It tangibly, you may not have them physically in your hand, but those things, those great things that God has done for you, that you are, you are yet to have it, or you are yet to receive it, that God has dispatched to you, that you are, read, you are yet to acknowledge and receive it or to be delivered unto you. They exist. They are there. By faith, you can acknowledge them. So it's the evidence you have not seen them, but you believe that this is my place in God. But knowledge is key. I pray that somebody will go back to the place of studying Knowledge. Take responsibility that will keep you to study. One of the greatest joy that believers have is that we have opportunity to hear the word of God on a daily basis. One of the greatest joy that the ministers of the gospel have is they have the opportunity to preach the gospel because you have to study. You have to go before the Lord. If you lack knowledge, you will think nothing good will happen. But the word of God is faithful. Because God is faithful. So it's important to know that faith is evidence of things not seen. Even though, nevertheless, those things, those great things that you didn't see, that are written in your name, they exist. They are coming. They will be delivered. You only need to have knowledge that they are coming. Every good and perfect gift come from heaven above from the Father of light where there is no variableness or any shadow of turning. God is not going to withdraw his grace and his mercy upon your life. So therefore, all that pertain to life and godliness, they are packaging the grace and mercy of God for you. Allocated in your name. Written in your name. They exist. And they will surely be delivered. You all you need is to have a knowledge of they exist. And you acknowledge that they will come to pass. And you begin to thank God that my health will be better. My home will be better. My marriage will be better. My business will be better. My brother will be better. My sister will be better. My siblings will be better. My community will be better. My ministry will be better. My, com my country will be better. Everyone that you know their issues, you begin to declare over their lives, they will be better. The sick will be healed. The lame will walk. The blind will see. The deaf will hear. The dumb will speak. You declare it. You declare it because that is your portion in Christ. They exist. 
though you don't see them, that's faith. Knowledge to acknowledge them. Boldly acknowledging them. Therefore, knowledge of the truth is king and is key. Not knowledge of the lies or confusion or contradictions or religiosity or things that are not contained in the 66 books. What can validate faith is the 66 books. Not what any man said. If it's not but validated by the word of God, it is a sinking ground. It can crumble. But the word of God, it is solid rock upon which you can build. And you can stand. And you can withstand. And you can conquer. And you can prevail. May you prevail. May you withstand. May you conquer. In the name of Jesus. Therefore, knowledge of the truth is king. Is key. When it's king, you rule. When it's key, you unlock. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When it's king, you rule, you have dominion. When it's key, you unlock your inheritance, your blessings in God. We stop here. May the Lord bless you and bless his word. And I want you to ask God, Lord, let me not lack the keys to unlock and acknowledge all that you are freely given to me. Pray that prayer in one minute. All that God has freely given to us. May we not lack the keys and the knowledge and to acknowledge, to unlock or activate all that God has freely given to us in, in Christ, in godliness, in holiness, by his mercy, by his favor. We on this platform and those who connect with us all over the nations of the earth, things will be turned around for you. The grace of God will multiply blessing upon your life. And you'll be a blessing. You will advance God's kingdom in your territory. You will not lack. You will not beg. You will not borrow. Knowledge will bring you to the place of relevance. In the name of Jesus. Those who have despised you, they will recognize you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you very good. Let me welcome my wife, so that we can just welcome everybody once again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. It was, it's just a wow factor to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Knowledge to acknowledge. To be honest with you, I think you need to listen to the message again and again and again, because it's power packed, loaded. Too many things were said that I cannot even recap. But you know what? You need to begin to reflect and think about the fact that knowledge to acknowledge. And as I sat there and I was listening to, to what Pastor was saying, you know, I now thought about the fact that knowledge, which is king, will now take you into the realm of might and then the realm of power. And then you acknowledge and then things begin to manifest for you. So knowledge being a king is also knowledge being king and might in the realm of might and in the realm of power. May God help us to acknowledge everything that he has said to us in his word in Jesus name. May you move from the realm of the knowledge of being king into the realm of his might and his power for manifestations of the things that God has said concerning you and I in Jesus' mighty name. Listen, you cannot go anywhere. I want you and I want to appeal to you, you need to share this message. This message is the message of the kingdom. You know, kingdom principles. You cannot just keep it to yourself. Just share it. And then until we come your way next week, Sunday, Pastor said, this is a series and you've, he's got more to actually share with us and teach us so that we can fulfill destiny, so that we can live a victorious life, so that we can fulfill purpose here on earth in Jesus name. So until we come your way, this is the Amazing Grace Christian Center where we watch, where we teach, where we pray and where we fellowship. Here, God has been helping us to teach precept by precept, line upon line, and we follow the Bible 
with every detail, even as the Lord has shown it to us on the mountain. So if you have been really blessed, please just share this message with somebody. Don't keep it to yourself and God bless you. Till we come your way next week, make sure that you acknowledge what you have heard and God will really bless you in Jesus' name. See you next week and God bless you. Bye-bye.